Hey, what's up? John Sonmez here from simpleprogrammer.com. Hey, I just wanted to give a quick thanks to one of our sponsors at Simple Programmer, which is Dev Mountain Bootcamp. You should go check them out. The link is in the description. They are a coding bootcamp and they can teach you web development, iOS development, UX design, a lot of good stuff. I get a lot of feedback from a lot of you out there that email me and have told me about Dev Mountain, so I decided to check them out myself. And I, I like what I found. I like their programs. They offer uh, some 12 week intensive programs. They also offer some after hours programs, which I know that some of you will like. So go check them out you can see the link in the description below dev mountain Bootcamp, and a big thank you to them for sponsoring simple programmer and i got a question today about figuring out how long that something should take and making estimates this is one of those topics that a lot of developers have to face pretty much every developer is asked the question uh, how long is it going to take uh, but especially if you're a freelancer this can be a problem for you so this question is from derek and derek says as a freelance web and iOS dev, I am always being asked how long a feature will take to implement. I want to give my clients a precise answer, but I find it hard to estimate. Sometimes a seemingly simple feature will take 10 times longer to implement than expected. Other times when I tell them it will take one week, for example, it only takes three days. Is this a common problem for freelancers or do I just need to gain more experience? So yes, this is a common problem, not just for freelancers, for anyone, uh, not just developers, for anyone that tries to estimate anything that is going to take more than, let's say, half an hour or an hour that isn't, isn't a, a skill that you can actually calculate, that, that has any kind of possible things that could go wrong or unknown unknowns, right? So here's the thing. This is, this is what I would recommend for you. First of all, just understand that you're not ever going to be able to be very, very accurate with estimating anything that's really going to take you over half an hour to an hour, right? You, you're really good probably within that range, but past that, it, 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 so it's really just a wild ass guess. So here's, here's what I would recommend is that as a freelancer, what you tell your clients is you, you, you sort of reframe it, right? So instead of talking about like exactly how many hours something is going to take, you give them your current best estimate and you tell them that you'll update them as you go along and, and tell them what it currently is at that time, right? So you, you come in and you, and you basically say, look, here, here's the thing, this is what it looks like from my experience, but every single development project, everything that I do is new. And and here's you know here's what I have you know whatever percentage confidence which which isn't going to be very high uh, starting out but every time but as I'm working through the project I'm going to update you and so this works really well if you're doing like an agile approach to development where you're giving them updates currently uh, it it doesn't work really well when you have to bid like a three month contract so you really want to transition to that model right so if you're billing them hourly the the key thing is that you're just updating them, letting them know where the progress is and, and where you're at and what percentage you think is left, you know, where you're at on the, on the project. And that's, that's going to be the best thing rather than giving a, an estimate up front that, that you're going to try and hold yourself to. Uh, the, the other, there's a couple other options here I want to give you. One of them is that you can, you can estimate to your, the best of your ability and just realize that there's going to be a fudge factor in there, uh, which, in which case you have to overestimate, right? So a lot of contractors, a lot of people do this. It's not necessarily the best thing for the client or for you because so, so most of the time you're going to get the better end of it, but a lot of times you're not, right? So if you overestimate everything, it's going to cost you because your bids are going to come in higher. Uh, people are going to think that you're sandbagging it, and you kind of are because you're you're fluffing things up a little bit in order to cover yourself. So you, you can you can think about doing that. I I would not recommend that as much. But here here's something that that I would recommend. This is perhaps the best way, which is to switch to a model of doing daily 
or, or weekly billing, right? So there's a real good book called, uh, I think it's called The, Million, the Millionaire Consultant or Million Dollar Consultant. I'll have to, I'll have to check it out uh, or I'll have to get the exact link here. But I think it's, I, think it's, I wanna say it's Alan Wise. Or, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. It's been a while since, since I read that book. Or a million, million Dollar Consulting, I think that might be what it's called. But in that, he talks about doing, you know, in, instead of doing the hourly billing that, that most developers do, switching the model up, right, and, and trying to do something like a weekly, uh, a daily billing. So in that case, what you're doing with your client is they're hiring you to work on something for a day or for a week. Now, that's a better way to go because you don't, you know, you've got to, it, they're going to have want to have some kind of estimate of how long that the work is going to take you, but it's going to be totally based on on your week, right? They're they're hiring you to work on something for that period of time, and so you can tell them where you're at, right? And you can have them make trade-offs and say, okay, well, look, we could probably get this done faster if you don't want this feature. If you want it done like this, this is you know how long it's going to take. And every week you're updating them and telling them where you're at. So so it's, it's a better model, I think, because then they're hiring you, like I said, by the day or the week, and the estimates are not quite as important. You know, of course, estimates are important. They're going to need to know, but you, it goes back to the very first thing I said, which is that you need to make sure that you're giving a current estimate rather than a long one. You know, if you, if you try and estimate six months how long something's going to take, that's that's a long period of time. But if instead every week you're you're saying where the estimate is now, you're going to be more and more accurate, and they're going to be able to see the the velocity or the direction that things are going, and to know you know where where, where you're at, and they can cancel the project at any time, right? If it if it doesn't look like it's going to be worth it. But that's that's how I would operate. That's how I do consulting. If I do consulting now, is I I can't I can't give you a perfect estimate. I'm I'm upfront with that, and I say look, but but here's the thing. Thing. If you hire me for a week, I will work on your project for a week, and I expect to make this progress at the end of the week. I'll tell you where I'm at. If you're like, man, that's not enough progress. Doesn't look like we're going to make it in time. It's going to be too much budget. Then, then that's fine. I'll give you what what I have, and and you can cancel at any time. But if you like the progress, we can keep on going. And this also makes it so it's less risky for them rather than committing to a six month or a year project or something like that as well. So it's a delicate thing. It's difficult. You know, as a freelancer you'll have to figure some of this out. You are going to have to have a little bit of buffer. That's why your hourly rate needs to probably be higher than what you think. There's, there's a lot of complexity to this, but once you get the hang of it and, and you, start, uh, you, you start being honest up front about not having the ability to give solid, perfect estimates and your clients understand that, then you're going to do much better off in the long run. It, it's, it's too much of a of a dangerous game to try and play the exact estimate game and pad things and buffer things and then sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. All right, that's all I got for you on that answer. Uh, if you liked this video, I have a request for you. Click that subscribe button below and I'll talk to you next time. Take care.